My name is Sebastian and in this video I want to show you how to programmatically access the test results of JUnit, especially how to create a JUnit test listener and why this might be interesting. And I'm going to use an extreme feedback device, an LED, to access that. So that's going to be interesting and cool, I hope. So what I have, I have just here a very basic JUnit test and this is nothing special. This is lit literally just a hello world example of testing something against a string. So basically, well, what is the point here? I can uh, go and just execute this test here. So for example, I could go and invoke this test either in my IDE, which you probably are well aware of, or I'm going to go and invoke this, for example, using Maven Verify in my Maven build or in my Gradle build, right? So basically your test will be executed here. So that's quite a kind of straightforward. What happens if your test fails? Well, you will see this in the IDE or in your build result. Okay, so how to access that information programmatically? There are, are a few ways how to do this. And of course you could go and for example, go to the Surefire reports here in my Maven build and then access it with the XML. But there are better ways, and especially if you're using JUnit and JUnit 5, you can have what is called a test execution listener. So how to do this? Basically, I'm gonna implement a class that is called, um, well, test result, for example, notifier. And this class is implementing, implementing a uh, test execution listener. And what this test execution listener, you see this is the JUnit um, platforms or JUnit 5 package. What it does, it well has some default methods that you can implement that are executed at a specific point. So for example, when a single execution finishes or when a whole test plan finishes. So that means a single test or the overall test run. So the difference here is if I would, for example, have the execution finished, then I could see, okay, this now will be executed once a specific test um, has, well, executed. So I could uh, go for the result and say, well, for example, get the status here and then also um, print this together with the test identifier, for instance, say, okay, get the display name or something like this and just uh, print this out as a, uh, as a string. And for the other method that I just mentioned, I could go for the test plan execution finished and say, uh, okay, the overall execution finished, something like this. Okay, now how to invoke this. In order to register this notifier here for my JUnit platform, the easiest way to do this is actually to use the service loader mechanism. You probably have seen this, these meter in services files. How this works is I'm going to create a file under meter inf, that's all uh, caps, and then um, a subfolder services, and then a file that is uh, called, well, in this way, like this um, execution listener. So that's um, org, you can see it here, JUnit, you can copy and paste this or just type platform launcher uh, test execution listener. So that's the name of the file. And then I'm gonna write my test result notifier. And thankfully my IDE can autocomplete this. So I thought, there we go. And okay, now it, now it is active. And now I can actually invoke a test again or basically test a test again, and then here I already see this result failed and then um, the test method. And then at the end it should say, okay, um, overall execution finished. Okay, interesting. So that's uh, basically the overall execution here. Let's um, include another colon uh, there, something like that, where this is status, let's say status name, just that this is a string. And now I'm gonna invoke this just to show it differently in my build here and that should work as well. Okay, failed um, and then successful for this overall. So it goes through a multiple uh, sort of components um, uh, that we have. So now I'm actually just running one single test, but that doesn't matter. I could um, invoke multiple ones. Um, I also have an IT that then would fail because the um, application is not running. So if I invoke the whole um, test, here, then I basically have failed test hello and failed test coffee. So this is basically failing now twice. 
Okay, so what to do with that? I basically can invoke uh, now or programmatically access the result of these overall test runs. So I could do something in this execution, a finished method, for example, and then just get the result. Or basically what I want, I want to get the ultimate or the overall result of my test plan. So then I say I'm going to um, save this here in a um, variable. So I say private uh, boolean something like passed. In the beginning, initially that's passed and once uh, this fails, so if I say, okay, if the result, uh, for example, if the status is failed and you can see that this is an enum here. So if uh, this is failed, then just make passed to false. So that's that. Okay, I can do this and then here I can just um, overall execution finished. I can access the, this and say, um, status is now passed or um, let's do it in this way overall execution finished it's nicer if passed um, say passed or their test failures something like this just for you to show that we can access this programmatically and then what we do, we now have just a single, um, well, invocation or system out over execution finish. There are failures. Or now if I actually would go and just fix this test and re-invoke it, then it should, well, all tests passed. It should be kind of like okay again. Because now what I can do, I can go in my test result notifier and, well, notify something. And now what I'm going to use, and, and that's a quite uh, cool thing about it, I'm going to use here, this uh, LED feedback device that Duke <laughs> is holding here. So I basically um, am using this one, this um, USB notification light, which you can just programmatically access using, uh, well, using the command line or also using some APIs. So I can go in my command line and say, for example, a blink, and then you see um, that it actually blinks. That's just the script that I have. So for notification, when is this actually helpful? Well, if I say I have a very long running test and then I just want to uh, well switch my workplace, have some other windows uh, focused and then get some still some notification. Of course, you could argue you could also have another type of notification, but I think it's just kind of cool to see this as an LED. And OK, how to include this now in this um, listener? Well, basically what I can uh, do here, I could say Please use a so-called process builder for a process. So say something like new process builder and then inv invoke this. Um, it's called uh, blink one tool with some arguments. So for example, I say, well, this is, should now be green. So um, that's that. Um, it can be green and then that would be a process builder. Start the process. So then I have a process and say, okay, process wait uh, for it to finish. Okay, and then I need to catch an IO exception and interrupted exception here. So just, well, I'm not interested in that actually, um, in case uh, there is an exception. And then I basically just invoke that. Okay, that's not the very correct yet because it basically now will just always be green once the test passed or once the tests are finished. But even if it fails, it's still green. So um, that's not quite what I want. I basically want to say, there is a um, result, of course. So as this argument, it should be either green or red. So if it is passed, then please make it green. Otherwise, make it red, of course, which I'm going to use here and saying, OK, that's going to be the argument there. And then it will be a displayed regardless. And then it's either green or red, which you can see here now. So that's that. It's green. Let's fail this test and rerun it. And then it's red. OK, now that's it's what is also possible. It's even cooler to do this in our IDE because then it's faster. So I can fix this now. I can rerun it again. And now you see it's green again. OK, but still cooler. I can include this in my Maven um, Quarkus dev. So if I use Quarkus with the development um, uh, mode and especially the continuous testing mode, what I can do, I can say, okay, please rerun the tests and rerun the tests. Okay, let's do something to fail. And you see, once I 
press save, it's automatically switches. So it's even faster, you see the result here, then I switch and see the result there because it's just immediately uh, invoked and then it has my um, notification listener. So you see how quickly now we can change this and then I get uh, the feedback uh, really quickly. So that's just, I think, a kind of cool or interesting combination of um, Quarkus, especially Quarkus uh, Dev and uh, this JUnit test listener and then our uh, funny uh, LED um, tool that we can use uh, with this process to control. Of course, I'm pretty sure there's also a Java API available, but just executing this process on the command line um, also works. And I think that's just an interesting approach. In general, once you have programmatic access to something, as programmers, we can pretty much access uh, well anything and include it into a process. So something like uh, this, having this text uh, test execu execution listener is kind of helpful, especially if we have long running tests. So if you found this entertaining uh, to watch and maybe even helpful, I would really appreciate a like and if you subscribe to my channel. And as always, thanks a lot for watching. Bye.